What is effect hit rate? Simple answer, it is a chance to apply a status effect on enemies. There are two kinds of status effects, debuffs and dots. Debuffs usually come from nihility units, with the common ones reducing defense, speed, or attack. Freezing and imprisonment also falls under this since they do not do direct damage. Meanwhile, dots are a mix of wind, fire, lightning, and physical units. But not every unit from these elements can apply dots. As for the long answer, it is this simple formula that you see here. There are four components that determines your chance to apply status effects. Your character's base chance, their effect hit rate, the enemy's natural effect resistance, and the enemy's natural debuff resistance. Effect resistance recently got nerfed and now caps at 40%, down from 50%, which is really helpful for high level boss fights. Debuff resistance is also set on each enemy. Each debuff and dot has a separate resistance value, and here are the ones currently in the game so far. Some enemies have 100% chance to resist some of these debuffs, which makes them immune. For example, the Flamespawn Bats and the Searing Prowler has 100% burn resistance, since they're literally on fire, so they're not going to be affected by burn, right? But overall, most enemies, including bosses, can be debuffed and even frozen, so the enemies with 100% immunity are kind of rare. But if you look at the list of debuff resistance, none of these fall under Silver Wolf's skill to add a weakness. Similar to his abilities that reduces defense or other stats, enemies do not have a debuff resistance to those kind of things. So for some abilities, you can just ignore the debuff resistance entirely. The other two components are more in our control. The base chance is shown on every skill that has a chance to apply debuff. But some skills have a set base chance, while others increases as you go higher on trace levels. Here are three examples. Jepard has a 65% base chance to freeze enemies with a skill, and that 65% is locked. Whether you have a skill at level 1 or 10, it's gonna stay 65. When we look at Silverwolf, her best ability, the one that adds a weakness, has a base chance that increases as you level the skill. At level 10, the base chance goes up to 85%. Whenever the game uses the term base chance, this means it is affected by your effect hit rate and enemy resistance. But there is a third variant called fixed chance, which cannot be increased or decreased by your stats or enemy stats. Yang Qing, the best ice boy, has a fixed chance to do his follow-up attack. And if the follow-up attack does happen, then there is another dice roll for a 65% base chance to freeze enemies. In this case, the chance to get the follow-up attack in the first place does not get better or worse from his or the enemy's stats, but the chance to freeze if the follow-up proc does happen will depend on these factors since that is a base chance and not a fixed chance, so building effect hit rate does help him out a little bit. Finally, the last factor that affects debuff chance is your effect hit rate, which is the core of this video. This is the factor that you can contribute the most to. The best source is from a main stat chest relic, which goes over 43% with a 5 star. Besides that, you have substats and other relic pieces, light cone passives, and trace passives. The latter two is not guaranteed for every character, especially if they're not in the nihility path. So how much effect hit rate is always needed to debuff? Well, that depends on what we mentioned earlier. High level bosses have a maximum effect resistance of 40%. Then there's that specific debuff resist and there's your base chance on the skill or ultimate. So to get a good answer for effect hit rate, we need to generalize some of these questions. Let's assume we are fighting a boss, since smaller enemies don't pose much of a threat anyways. And let's not specify an enemy with debuff resistance, since that changes a lot from enemy to enemy, and a lot of the universal debuffs that reduces stats does not have a debuff resistance. And so now our formula looks like this when fighting high level bosses. Now to fill in some more numbers. Let's compare four different base chance percentages. A lot of skills, especially the freezing ones, have a 65% chance, so we'll use that. And at high levels, lots of skills with increasing base chance goes up to about 85%, so we'll use that number as well. In case you're curious, 85% is the base chance of a Silver Wolf with level 10 skill. And I'm also picking 75%, since that's the common chance for most accounts still around Equilibrium level 4. And finally, most ultimates have a 100% base chance to debuff, so that's why I'm including this one as well. Run all these numbers, and add in some magic, also known as math, boop 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 boop, and here are the results. 
I'm calling the purple line the silver wolf line since her weakness skill has the 85% base chance at max level. The yellow line can be called the welt line since that's his chance to slow down enemies with his skill. The blue line is the freeze line since Jepard and Yang Cheng has a set 65% to freeze enemies. And the green line is the ultimate line since most ultimates have 100% base chance to apply a debuff. This graph also shows us the effect hit rate needed to always apply a status effect on bosses for each attack type. If you only care about landing debuffs from ultimates, then you only need about 66% effect hit rate to always land it. For Silver Wolf's weakness skill, we need around 97%, which is a lot but still obtainable. The free to play Nihility Light Cone adds 40% effect hit rate, a 5 star relic adds 43%. And usually, there's some traces that gives bonus effect hit rate for Nihility units. So those three things alone will get you over 110%. But most of the time, you don't need 100% success rate. Anything that's 80% or higher is consistent and stable enough. To get above 80% chance to land the status effect, the unit only needs 55 to 80 effect hit rate. This does not include the ice characters because constantly freezing enemies is kind of cheap, so it's going to be really expensive to do. And you can already have fun perma-freezing enemies and bosses in the simulated universe. So overall, we can use this graph to find the effect hit rate sweet spot we need to build. If you want to guarantee a 100% chance to debuff, then build more effect hit rate, but try not to overcap and waste stats. One good thing is the debuff chance is linear, so there's not much diminishing return. For me, I will keep all my immunity units around 80% chance, since that is consistent enough. Except for Silver Wolf, where I want to be close to 100% chance to apply the weakness debuff. The reason why I care more about Silver Wolf, not only because I think she's the best character in the game, is because the weakness debuff can make or break a fight by constantly breaking through their toughness. A lot of bosses have big hitting moves that takes a full extra turn to charge up, like they are a Dragon Ball character or something. So if you can break their toughness before the attack comes out, you just ignore it entirely. Other units like Pella or Welt's defense or speed reduction is helpful, but not enough to stop an enemy's charge up attack, so I don't need a 100% chance to land those every time. Anyways, I hope this analysis and explanation on effect hit rate was helpful. Hope it wasn't too long and made most of you lose interest midway through. I really want to thank all the viewers that watched these all the way through the end, and as always, have fun out there, Trailblazer.